Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today I'm taking a look at a digital microscope. The kind of thing you'd use on your bench for looking at PCBs, especially surface mount stuff where you need to look at stuff close up. Now specifically my question is, if you can't afford an expensive digital microscope, is it a good idea to buy a really cheap one from Timu? Well, we're about to find out. Now on the surface, it does look rather promising. They claim two megapixel, 50 to 1000 times zoom, USB out to your computer, and the ability to take photos and video and save them onto an SD card. Apparently you can vary the brightness and the focal length. And this came in at a bargain, 18 pounds. 18 pounds for a digital microscope. Is that a good idea? I don't know. Most of the ones I've been looking at are well over 100 pounds. Now this does come in rather generic looking packaging. So let's see what we get in the box. It is light as a feather. So I don't hold high hopes for this, but you never know, it might just surprise us. Okay, so there we go. Here is our digital microscope. Right, you get the microscope itself. It weighs like nothing. It's really, really light. It does have a LCD screen. You've got brightness control on the side there, micro SD card reader, and USB-C for power. And you can recharge it as well to use it standalone. So you don't have to have it plugged in all the time, but you can adjust your focus here. And you can also move the platform. Wow, that is really stiff. If you're really strong, you can move the platform up and down. Wow. You need some force behind that. The other thing is it's quite light. So I can see that moving around quite a lot on your bench while you're struggling to wind that up and down. All seems quite simple. You've got a left and a right, what looks like a menu button and an OK button. What else do you get in the box? You've got a cleaning cloth. We've got some instructions and we've got a USB cable and some sort of, I guess that goes on the bottom of here. First impressions are, looks kinda cheaply built, is very light. But having said that, if you're looking for a digital microscope for your bench and you can't afford an expensive one, maybe this is the way to go. So let's see if this Timu Digital Microscope is a winner or not. Let's hook it up and see. Now I've charged this up. It can run in standalone mode. So there we go. Welcome. Pretty bright. So you can adjust the brightness there on the side. Very flickery. On this side, you've just got your USB-C. You've got an SD card reader as well. So you can plug an SD card directly into it and you can use it in standalone mode and you can press the OK button when you want to take a photo, or a long press on the OK will record video. And then you can transfer the SD card out onto your computer. So you've got your menu button here, so you can change various parameters like your resolution, two megapixels being the top one on here. So OK, you can also change your language setting, your time setting. You've got screen savers here, which you can basically have three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, or turn it off. You can use the left and right buttons to change your zoom from 1.2 up to four times zoom. If I just throw a little washer under there, you can see we're on 3.8 times zoom. So if I adjust the focus, focus in on that. There we go, perfect. Okay, and then you can just zoom out. You've got 1.2 up to four times zoom. And then obviously the more you wind that up, the less focal length you've got. So if you want to see something in real detail, you can zoom it right up. This is a budget microscope, so I don't have massive high hopes on it. But it's really handy for things like if you want to identify a component, sometimes the writing on it might be too small. Just adjust the focus there. Now I can already see the image quality is not the best, but if you just want to use it for something like looking at a component, okay, so if I put something tiny on there, so if like me, you have trouble reading the writing on these really small components, that's really actually quite clear. Where this microscope seems to fall down is I'm getting quite a lot of glare 
off of the component. So you can see if you change the angle of it there, it's okay. I think where it's let down is by having one single beam of light on this. It's reflecting off the component. And I see the more expensive scopes, you generally have like a flexible light, one on each side, which obviously is reflected in the price of this microscope. You can see how it can be useful for identifying a component or something, just anything. You want to look at something that's really tiny. I mean, I tend to just use my iPhone and just zoom in on the component if I can't quite read it. But I can see where this would come in handy. And the fact it's standalone, you could just have it on the corner of your bench and just grab it when you need to look at something close up. It's pretty cool, I've got to say. But if you want to have a look at a board, you can get that under there. You can see quite clearly there on your surface mount components, you can see the numbers on them which I would not stand any chance of seeing that. Even with my strongest glasses on, without zooming in on my phone, I wouldn't be able to see that. So that's quite handy if you want to identify something that's really tiny, either on a board or just a loose component. Or if you want to check out the number on an IC, you can see that actually quite clearly. And of course, you can, if you've got an SD card in there, you just press the OK, it'll take a photo. Then you've got that reminder of what that part number is, which is pretty cool. If you want to find a part number on something, there you go. All you've got to do is just adjust the focus to get it in and you can see what that part is. So it's quite handy. You can already see one limitation of this microscope is the size of the tray. It's pretty small. If I wanted to look at something like a motherboard, that could be a problem because you don't have the depth to get in there. So I can see some bits but I can't see what I need to see. So if I wanted to have a look at this socket, for instance, and take the CPU out and have a closer look at the pins and stuff, I wouldn't be able to get it in there far enough, which is a bit of a limitation. But then it is designed just for looking at small bits and bobs. It's not designed for looking at computers specifically. But I will say, if you adjust the focus, it does give you a rather clear image. So you can actually zoom in, but you're just limited on, if you were working on a board like this, it wouldn't be much use because I wouldn't be able to see some of these components in the center, for example. But where it does come in handy is if you've got something really small, like this motherboard from an Amazon Kindle Fire that I've been repairing, that's quite a nice small board. You can just pop that in there and you can see actually, that's quite a clear image. You can see the part numbers on there and you can adjust the brightness on the side, but I find it's just really flickery. It doesn't seem to, when you let go, it's got its limitations, but then it's built down to a price. Something little like this out of a tablet or out of a mobile phone, for instance, is pretty cool. So I'd say, yeah, if you want a decent benchtop microscope, then you're going to want to pay at least a little bit more. For me, I would want something that's got more depth to it so I can put some bigger PCBs in. And I would want to be looking at things like motherboards from when I'm doing repairs and I want to be looking in the middle of the board for something, then I wouldn't be able to do it on something like this. So I'd be looking for something that's got a bit more depth to it and maybe a bit better illumination rather than just having the one light in the middle, something with the two lights. But then it depends how much you want to spend. If you've not got a budget for an expensive digital microscope, I would say this is not terrible. This is far from being terrible. It's actually rather good at just looking at little bits and bobs. I can see me just having this on the corner of my bench and just pulling it out when I want to look at something that I can't quite see. I could actually zoom up and see it nice and clearly on here. Now, I've never bothered getting myself a digital microscope before. I always thought it was going to be a little bit out of my reach for something that I might only use now and then. But I can see actually how useful this is going to be. And I think I'll be taking a look at something a bit more mid-range. But for less than £20, as long as you accept its limitations, I'd say for the money, that's all right. Now, my only other gripe with this microscope is when I plug in the USB to go onto PC camera mode, which is there, I get the image on my PC, but I don't get an image on there. Might be a minor grumble, but I'd quite like to have it on there 
as well as recording on the PC at the same time. Now when you hook up to your PC, the PC does recognize the microscope and the microscope goes into PC camera mode. Now you can download an application, they do mention it in the instruction manual, there's something called Smart Camera, but I found that actually the Windows Camera app works just fine. You can record video on it and you can get still images. These are some photos I took from the digital microscope of some little components so you can get an idea of the image quality. As you can see, the images you get from the PC are actually not bad. And if I wanted to save them as a reference for a board that I've been working on or a part number that I wanted to remember, then it's quite handy. I could save it in a file on my computer and I've got that there for future reference. What I can see is that as I find this more and more useful, I'm most likely going to want to look for an up spec version, especially one that I can put a larger board on and I can work on and preferably will have a display on the screen as well as on the PC at the same time. That's obviously going to cost me a lot more than this one. But to answer the question of, is a cheap digital microscope from Timu any good? Well, as long as you accept its limitations, actually, yes. If you're on a budget and you just need something for bits and bobs, it's not bad. I mean, you can feel it's cheaply built. It's light as a feather. It's clearly built down to a price. But if you haven't got a budget for a more expensive digital microscope or you can't justify it, this is actually not bad. So there we go, the InScam digital microscope, which I paid £18 for from Timu. Prices may vary. As with Timu, the prices go up and down all the time. So keep an eye out for the best offer. So if you're looking for a really, really cheap digital microscope and you don't want to lay out a lot of money on a more expensive one or you want a cheap one to experiment with or play about with you know what it's not horrible and for 18 pounds if you're looking at really tiny components and you can't read the part numbers i have that problem myself so it's quite easy to just pop it under here and it does actually do the job it's quite handy that it's a rechargeable unit so if you just got it on the corner of your bench and you just want to quickly have a look at something it's quite handy the only limitations really are the depth here so if you want to look at something on a pcb that's on like maybe a computer motherboard or something you're not going to be able to get to the middle of the board because you've got this restriction here and you've got no way of moving everything is fixed on this i guess it really is built down to a price but if you're looking for something with more functionality then a little bit more money laid out will get you something a bit better. But you get what you pay for, and as a digital microscope, it does function a little bit clunky. This is really, really hard to wind up and down, and the image quality is not the best. I mean, it's only 2 megapixel, and it's like a 4.3-inch display. The other gripe I've got is with this one, when you plug it into your PC, this screen goes off. So yes, you can view it on your PC monitor, but it would be nice to have this in front of your face as well whilst you're recording. Grumbles aside, would I recommend this for around £18? Yes, as long as you don't have hugely high expectations. It's got its limitations, but still, £18 does the job. So thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this cheapest chips. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching subscribing sharing commenting and liking it's always massively appreciated i'll be back soon with some more tech related videos in the meantime take care and i'll see you on the next one